Hi, my name is Charles Capway, and I'm an associate at Evershed Sutherland and member of the state and local tax team in the Washington, D.C. office. And joining me today is Justin Stone, my colleague from the New York office. Justin, can you please tell us all something about yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Justin Stone. I recently joined the SALT team from a firm in Chicago. Prior to that, I practiced in New Orleans for a number of years. I'm really glad to be here. And we're glad to have you. Let's now begin our review of the 2018 mid-year edition of the Evershed Sutherland SALT scoreboard. For the past two and a half years, the Evershed Sutherland SALT team has tracked significant state and local tax litigation. We've tallied taxpayers' wins and losses, analyzed results, and provided updates in the quarterly SALT scoreboard. Now, we've done two of these video casts in 2016 and 2017. Justin, how is 2018 so far comparing to the past two years? Well, at this point in 2018, we have approximately 34% of taxpayer wins. This is not as good as prior years. In 2016 and 2017, taxpayers did 42% and 41% wins, respectively. But let's not give up hope on 2018 yet. Taxpayers had some good news in the second quarter, rebounding after winning only 30% of the cases of the first quarter. Turning now to cases by tax type, taxpayers are doing better in corporate income tax cases in 2018 than sales and use tax cases, winning 40% compared to 33% of the significant cases. There's been a number of important cases this quarter. First, the United States Supreme Court decided South Dakota v. Wayfair. In that case, the Supreme Court struck down its fiscal presence sales tax nexus rule that it established in the 1992 decision of Quill v. North Dakota. We have this marked as a taxpayer loss, even though many of our clients are rooting for a taxpayer win. In HealthNet v. the Oregon Department of Revenue, the Oregon Supreme Court held that revisions to the state's income tax apportionment formula provisions did not violate the multi-state tax compact or the Oregon Constitution. Next, and in our spotlight on New York, in the matter of EXO Communications Services, the New York Tax Appeals Tribunal denied a sales tax exemption for telecommunications service providers purchases of electricity. Charles, do you have any cases to talk about? Sure thing. In La Bellevue City of Chicago, the Cook County Circuit Court upheld the City of Chicago's amusement tax as applied to streaming services. In particular, the court held that the amusement tax did not violate the Internet Tax Freedom Act, the Uniformity Clause of the Illinois Constitution, or the Commerce Clause of the United States Constitution. The taxpayer has appealed this case to the Illinois Appellate Court. A lot of our clients have been paying close attention to this case, and we're going to look forward to seeing see how the case turns out the next round. In the meantime, we wouldn't be surprised to see Chicago aggressively pursue enforcement of the tax now that they have this decision from the circuit court. Having just moved from Chicago and followed everything very closely, I tend to agree. Chicago has a reputation for aggressive tax enforcement, and we'll watch this case closely on appeal. That's all for now. We'll be back with the final two SALT scoreboards for the year. Then, in early 2019, we'll be back with the SALT video cast for the 2018 year in review. For more information on the SALT scoreboard and the SALT team, please visit evershed-sutherland.com, stateandlocaltax.com, and the SALT Shaker app. And before we leave you today, we'd like to invite you to send a submission in to the newest feature, SALT Society. If you've recently gotten married, bought a house, had an exciting vacation, please shoot us an email and a photo to the following email address, sutherlandsaltonline at evershed-sutherland.com. See you next time.